Welcome to PressHerald.com. I'm Bill Nemitz, and today is the day that anyone of a certain age remembers very well. <laughs> Fifty years ago today, President Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. Joining me today is my good friend Harold Pacious. Uh, we were swapping stories the other day, and I told him I was in fourth grade the day the president was shot, and I still remember vividly uh, being let out of school, going home, and actually telling my father, who didn't know yet, that the president had been shot. Harold, on the other hand, was not only in Washington, D.C., but very soon found yourself in the White House. That's right. Tell Bill. us about it. I was working in the Peace Corps for the president's brother-in-law, Sergeant Shriver, and uh, I went out for a sandwich, then a cigar, <laughs> the, at the Dart Drug Store at 8th, uh, excuse me, at 18th and I. And uh, that's about a block away from the Peace Corps. And the Peace Corps was on one side of Lafayette Park and the White House on the other side. So you could look out the windows of the Peace Corps, look right at mm -hmm. the, the White House across the park. And uh, I, w I went to pay for the cigar, and the guy said to me, did you hear the president's been shot? I said, no, he's been shot in Dallas. So I rushed back a uh, block and a half uh, to the Peace Corps. I actually saw... Uh, Sarge Shriver and his wife Eunice, President, who at the time was the head of head of the Peace Corps. He was the head of the Peace Corps, and he was my boss. Mm -hmm. I went to the newsroom of the Peace Corps. The guy that was the news director was a guy named Douglas Kiker, who later became mm -hmm. a famous NBC correspondent. And so uh, Doug Kiker and I were watching the TV, and then when they announced the president was dead, maybe within 30 seconds, we looked across out the window and saw the flag go down to half mass on top of the White House. Oh my House. goodness, you actually saw them lower the flag. So I actually saw that flag come down to half staff, mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, uh, probably uh, an hour and a half later, maybe uh, close to three o'clock, uh, Shriver's secretary came in and uh, uh, asked me to come out in the hallway. She said, you live in nearby in Georgetown, don't you? And I said, yeah, I live maybe 10 minutes away. And she said, do you have a black tie I said, I do. I'm in the Navy Reserve. I have a black tie. She said, Sarge is at the White House, and he's been asked to start planning for what they're going to do with the president's mm -hmm. body and arrangements and so forth. Uh, and he called me. He wants a black tie. He wants to be seen He wants to be in seen mourning. in mourning mm -hmm. with a black tie. Could you go home and get your black tie and bring it to him? I'll clear you at the Northwest Gate. Security was different in those a days. A little bit. Totally uh, different. <laughs> it was a much like White House West Wing where, you know, just a few people yeah, working there. Yeah. So I got my car, uh -huh. I went home, I got my black tie. Heart pounding? You know, I didn't think of it that, I, I, I don't really remember, but yeah, I, yeah. I don't think I thought of it at, at that time. So we were all in shock. Yeah, that's dead. right. I, well, most of us were in Washington because of the president. Sure. I went to Washington because, you know, I was a young man. Uh, I went to Washington in, in, in 61. I just, uh, I see... Uh, just had my 25th birthday, and I was an idealist. Mm -hmm. And the president appealed to idealism. And now he's dead. And now he's dead. So I, I went to the Northwest Gate, and the guy goes, yeah, yeah, go right in. And then he had a guard take me into the West Wing. I had never been in the West Wing in my life. I, I later worked there, but I had never mm -hmm. been in there. Mm -hmm. And took me into Ralph Dungan's office, which is a few doors down from the Oval Office, President Kenny's assistant. I had the tie. I gave it to Sarge. He was sitting there. He said, sit down. I might need you to run an errand. Now describe the room. Just a well, few people, you, many people? Oh, there were probably eight or nine people. And, of course, I was in that room for a long time sure. at, mm -hmm. a, a, after that. And, uh, and uh, the, the people who were in there were uh, Mr. Duncan, mm -hmm. who was a special assistant to President Kennedy. And it was a nice corner office. It was, it was one of the nicer offices in the West Wing. Um, Andrew Biddle Duke, who was chief of protocol, uh, two army colonels, both from the military district of Washington, and they're in charge of military funerals. Okay. And the logistics of the procession. The logistics and all that. of the procession, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. riderless horse. Right, right. <laughs> the riderless mm -hmm. horse. Mm -hmm. the so they plan, before your eyes over the next several hours, they before, planned. Well, I wasn't there several hours. I okay. was probably there for the first. Hour and a half, I see. maybe hour and 45 minutes. And uh, they did plan, well, you, you say, was my heart pounding? It wasn't when Mary Ann asked me to go get the tie and bring it over there. Mm -hmm. But once I got in the room and I saw what was going on, uh, and he said, sit down, I yeah. might need you to run an errand. And this, I, re I remember very little. 
-hmm. But I remember this. I said to myself, sit absolutely still. They'll forget you're right. here. Fly in the wall. Fly in the wall. They'll forget <laughs> you're here. They won't throw you out. Right. This is something, you know, history is being made right sure. in this room. And uh, you're one of the few people in the world who will have ever witnessed it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so I did sit there and I said to myself, remember everything that's being said. And? Of course, you couldn't make a note. I, I, and so I only remember a couple Fan of things. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's hard. It's yeah. hard to retain the yeah. whole. But, but, the, but the experience and the ambient, you know, what was going on in the room, well, the grief, the shock, all the, that. There was must, no, it was all business. Really? It was all business. I mean, Shriver, even, even Sergeant Shriver? Shriver is the president's brother-in-law. Sergeant Shriver is a man that I admire probably more than any man I ever met in my life. He's yeah. an extraordinary human being. He was busy. He, he was the family member who had been given the the role of working all of this out. So they finally cut you loose. They finally yeah. cut me loose at some point, uh, yeah, but it was, you know, it was a long time. An hour and a half or two so, hours so, into it. So what did you do? Go back to work? Go home and, and wonder if this I, just I, really I, happened? I, I'm sure I went back to work because that's where the action was. Yeah, you know? yeah, and I'm all sure. of Washington. Yeah, was mm -hmm. but the one thing I remember, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I will never forget this, is uh, Already heads of state or embassies were calling saying their head of state sure. was coming. This mm -hmm. was within an hour. Yep. Their head of state was going to be there. What are the arrangements? Security. Well, security and, other, and yeah. where, you know, where, what, what arrangements? Sure. What are you going to do? Where is he going to lie in state? Mm -hmm. What will our role, role be as right. heads of state? And so Andrew Biddle Duke, who was chief of protocol, reported that to Shriver and the others in the room. And... Uh, and he said, uh, look, uh, and they had already decided the president would lie in state in the White House, mm -hmm. capital in the White House, and then go, the funeral would move from the White House to St. Matthew's That Cathedral. famous yeah. procession. Yeah. 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 And um, so some, uh, uh, Andrew Biddle Duke said, I don't know what we can do because all these limousines, they'll all have a limousine and yeah. security. Mm -hmm. The line will be at the St. Matthew's Cathedral with, with the case on, and they'll still be leaving the White House, and it'll be a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. They won't be able to do it. So, uh, the one of the, I think it was one of the colonels said, "Well, they're going to have to walk behind the case on." And Shriver said, "Oh no!" Mm -hmm. and, and I'll never forget this. If they, if they can get Jack the way they did today, they can they can get Buffalo Bill walking mm -hmm. down the street. Never that. They can get Buffalo Bill walking down oh. the street. And so they worked on Shriver. They said, Sarge, what are we going to do? We can't move these people by automobile from the White House to St. Matthew's Cathedral. There's going to be too many of them. Mm. Can't do it. So he finally gave in. He gave in. But it's interesting that even then he was thinking more than just one person. Everybody, you know, everybody in that, that room assumed, and many thought it was a right-wing conspiracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me, all these years later, having seen it as up close as you did. Why is this anniversary so spellbinding? Why, why is everybody pausing today and remembering, whether it was me as a fourth grader in school or you as a young guy in the White House, what, what, why is this day separate from all the others in your opinion? Well, it's only happened, what, three times in our history, uh, Lincoln, McKinley, and mm -hmm. Kennedy. And Kennedy was a young, vibrant guy, and he, he, he appealed to so many people. Mm -hmm. You know, he was handsome, he was clever, he was smart, he was quick, he was funny. Mm -hmm. He was all these things, and it was an enormous shock, and it just so dominated everything. Plus television. You know, Plus the, the, television. Those earlier assassinations were not televised. Exactly. You know. Because there's so many conspiracy theory, theories around, people are fascinated. Yeah, what, with happened? The, what happened? What happened? Right, right. Were there, you know, two gunmen and all right. of that. Well, we got to wrap this yeah. up. I have one more question. Yeah. Did you get your tie back? I did. <laughs> I'm glad to hear she that. Gave, he must have given it to her, his secretary, because she gave it back. You got your tie back. You, did. you didn't have to go back to the reserve and tell them I lost my tie. That's right. In other words. That's right. Well, yeah. it's an amazing story, and we yeah. thank you for sharing it with us. And we thank you for joining us here today at PressHerald.com.